and we are live here and I know a lot of you immediately are probably wondering wow that's an interesting name for the title of a video Richard Allen amateur hour but in today's video I'm going to lay out 10 reasons here why I think this was probably Richard Allen's first crime I know that's probably a controversial take but I've been spending a lot of time thinking about this and I hope everybody will hear me out here because I think I lay out a pretty good case as to why, um, you know, he's not necessarily a serial killer like some people are talking about, uh, and that he probably hasn't committed other murders prior to this, allegedly. And I want to make that point clear as well. Anything I discuss in this video, again, people are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. We're speculating based on things that we know about this case and based on my past five years studying this case nearly daily. Um, and again, I apologize. I don't make videos as often as some of you would like. Um, I've got a lot going on in my life. <laughs> uh, raising a kid on my own who just became an adult. Uh, my parent, my father just got out of a rehab facility uh, for uh, you know heart issues, lung issues. And so I've had to help take care of that as well. So I apologize. Anyway, um, I'm going to start this video with a story and the, I'm guessing this video is going to be about 15, 20 minutes long. And here goes. Um, when I was a teenager, about 14 years old, I grew up on a military base. Okay. And I had a couple of kids who were uh, friends of mine that were like 13 years old. Um, they were real trouble all the time, uh, constantly getting into trouble, this, that, uh, and just people that I happened to hang around with though, because that's what we did on the military base. We were, we were all friends. And one time, one evening, one of my friends decides, hey, let's go out and steal hood ornaments off of vehicles. Now, this was like in the late 1980s, okay? And I don't know what possessed them to want to do this, but there were kids at school who had hood ornaments from cars that were showing them off on necklaces, just weird things. And I grew up in a very affluent area, a very rich area and a rich school system, despite the fact that I grew up on this poor military base. And so, you know, some of us kids, we didn't see our parents, our fathers, a lot of times they're overseas, uh, you know, probably doing stupid stuff like this for attention as dumb teenage kids do. Now, what happened was they want and they took these hood ornaments and I didn't take any of them, but I was with them that night, okay? So I was technically an accomplice to this crime because they want out took these hood ornaments, the two of them, and I'm walking with them the entire night. They go and they do this. I kind of forget about it. And for whatever reason, they panic, okay? And they decide that they're going to come up with the story that they found these hood ornaments that, that they later put in a big paper bag. And that they're going to tell everybody, oh, we found these hood ornaments out in a field or something or out near this fence. And, of course... What that did was put themselves with some sort of evidence from that crime. To make a long story short, because I was older than them, even though I didn't commit any of the thefts myself, and I have no criminal record, so I don't want any of you to get the wrong idea. I'm you know, in my 40s. Uh, I, I've raised a child by myself that I had custody of. So I learned my lesson from being around these people when I was a kid. I, I have no criminal background. So... I end up getting punished with, I think, like six months of house arrest because it's on a military base and ordered to pay money back for the things that were stolen, et cetera, et cetera. Um, while my two other friends only got three months of house arrest, got off early and didn't have to pay any retribution. Of course, the two of them blamed me, et cetera, et cetera. And you're probably like, well, Tim, why are you telling everybody this story? Well, what does that have to do with Richard Allen and these things? Now, granted, this wasn't a homicide that, you know, I was out there committing with these kids or anything, but what it was, was an example of how when you're inexperienced at committing a crime, you make mistakes. And the two kids that I were with made mistakes because the dumbest thing they did and could have possibly done was, A, they told people that they found these items in a field, putting themselves with the crime scene evidence, number one. And number two, they were later overheard by their parents talking about it on the phone 
and saying that they did it. The parents overheard it, turned their own kids and me into the police on the Navy base. And I remember being in the police department crying, you know, I, I didn't do this. I was just with them, but they didn't want to hear any of that. Of course, I'm the oldest one of the three. So I get hammered with the majority of the blame. It scared the crap out of me, scared me straight. Again, I have like one traffic ticket in 30 years since then. So, you know, I used to want to become an FBI agent. I learned my lesson from that. Now, similarly, I think Richard Allen, despite all the wild conspiracy theories about him being a serial killer, possibly, and I know there's forensic psychologists who say, typically somebody will escalate to a crime this violent, but that's not always the case, okay? A lot of times, people who are killers or serial killers, uh, everybody tries to put them in a box. And even the profilers are wrong sometimes. And you have to remember that. It, it, everything isn't like you see on TV all the time. And while we may understand certain things about human psychology and generalizations about people, they're not always going to apply just because everybody wants to put somebody, like I said, into a box. So here we go. Here's the 10 reasons why I think Richard Allen, this may have been his first crime. And again, I think that whether somebody else was involved, somebody else facilitated it or not, this was complete amateur hour by Richard Allen. And number one, and the biggest one, obviously, is he let Liberty German take video of him. If it is him, again, this is allegedly, he's been arrested and has been charged with this. He let Liberty German take video of him. And the reason I just told that whole story that I told is because what did Richard Allen do after that? That was the dumbest thing in the world that got him caught. He went to Dan Doolin and put himself at the crime scene that day on the bridge at 1.30 to 3.30 p.m., allegedly by his own admission. Much like my idiot friends in the story I just told, being probably their first crime of some kind, panicked and put themselves with some of the evidence, stupidly. And again, this is probably what got Richard Allen caught. So that's number one. He let Liberty German take video of him. Again, number two, he put himself at the scene of the crime. Number three, he committed this crime in broad daylight while trying to control not one, but two victims. That's awfully, awfully gutsy thing for somebody to be doing if they're trying not to get caught. Number three, he allegedly left an unspent round at the crime scene. Again, that links him to the crime. The next one, he allegedly confessed multiple times to his wife, to prison guards, and to other people. And that's a big one, especially if you're trying to prove to other people that you're innocent. Now, a lot of people out there say, oh, well, it was coerced, it was this, it was that. How do you know? You haven't seen any evidence that proves that. None. And again, I apologize, I stopped counting numbers, but, uh, you know, I think this is like number six here. And <laughs> when he was, here's the other one that, that gets me. When he was re-interviewed in October 2022, in fact, I think it was the same day of his arrest or within a few days of it, when he was re-interviewed, he said that he was on the bridge again during that time wearing a blue jacket, some sort of jeans, and a cap. This just blows my mind. So even after he's re-interviewed, he says, eh, I was out there wearing the same thing as the guy on the bridge. Okay, that's, that's, that's somebody who's committed a bunch of crimes before. That's somebody who's got this great plan, who's done this sort of thing a bunch of times, and he, he's just going to put himself out there matching that. It kind of doesn't add up to me. 
forgive me. The next one, and forgive me, uh, my eyesight is a little bit different here. He allegedly stages the crime scene. Now, again, I think this is another reason why this might be his first time. This happens. He panics. And he goes out there, and he doesn't necessarily have a plan to stage the crime scene, but he stages the crime scene because he didn't necessarily anticipate killing these girls. I think maybe he wanted to rape these girls or commit some sort of sexual assault or who knows. And I think things probably got out of control. You know, I've thought all kinds of things. I've thought, you know, well, what one of the top three reasons why people commit violent murders according to the fbi website that i read and have studied um you have sexual motivation you have financial motivation which we know wasn't going on here but third you have anger and i've always asked myself what angered richard allen enough to allegedly do this to these girls well let's say you're trying to control a couple of girls i don't know maybe he has them their hands tied maybe he has them handcuffed maybe he tells them he's a cop and I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, there's no proof that they chased them across the river, this, that, you know, I, I think he did chase them across the river. And I think it's because they tried to run away. Now, maybe Libby picks up a rock or something in the middle of her trying to escape a sexual assault, or Abby picks up a rock from the river or something while she's running, turns, throws it at Alan. Maybe it conks him in the head or something. Maybe that enrages him. There's any number of reasons why this could have gone from just a sexual assault to him enraging people. And we even hear Doug Carter say in the press conference, I still believe you have a little bit of conscience left. And there's probably something that they found at the crime scene or some sort of evidence or something that leads them to believe that as bad as this person was, maybe there was just a shred of remorse or that that wasn't what was intended to happen. Okay. And again, these are just theories that I have based on evidence. And then the next one, that we have here and again forgive me he allegedly gets his vehicle caught on county road 300 north on the hoosier harbor store camera i mean you're in broad daylight you know there's cameras everywhere in this world all the time even in 2017 ring cameras business cameras and i know it's a more rural sort of road for those of you who've been down there so there's not going to be a lot of cameras but one was enough one was enough to get a vehicle matching the description of his Ford, according to investigators. Again, according to investigators, allegedly. And I want to keep hammering that home. That's allegedly. The next one. He kept the gun that matched the unspent round instead of ditching it. Now, maybe he, maybe he didn't realize that he left an unspent round out there. But what really creeps me out, and I've stated this in other videos, about the search warrant affidavit for his property, is they stated that in there was a cigar box or a keepsake box that was on the headboard or the mantle of his bed that had one unspent 40 caliber round just sitting by itself in a box. Now, some of you may say, well, you know, that might be evidence of... Uh, another crime and who knows maybe it is but maybe that's his sadistic way of reminding himself or you know that's kind of his calling card oh i'm gonna leave the unspent round there and every night when he goes to sleep he gets some perverse thrill knowing that that bullet that's in that little box in his house uh, by his bed or something symbolizes what happened that day we know that richard allen had a breakdown of some kind in 2015 there's record of it there's record of him problem drinking. I think this it was just a man who was in his 40s, who's probably working a, a job as a pharmacy tech. He's getting older. He's not getting any more attractive. You could see he had some sort of disdain in that video where his wife catches him looking at the cell phone in his car. He has some sort of disdain for his wife or her behavior because you don't give your wife a look like that or an angry look like that or shoot a look out of the corner of your eye, unless you're kind of irritated. 
Um, you know, his daughter moves out of the house. I think gets married or something. Uh, don't quote me on that. I know she at least moves out of the house. Um, I think his brother-in-law dies uh, somewhere in that time frame, and he's actually. And some people say, "Oh, it's a psych ward he was taken to." Well, I've not seen any evidence of that. It would probably be against HIPAA laws, but he's taken to the hospital to be evaluated. So if something's bad enough to where your own wife has to call the police on you and have you taken to the hospital for a drinking episode, something's going on up here in addition to the drinking probably. And granted that was before the murders, but who knows if he has some sort of mental disorder or some sort of, you know, instability. Maybe he can't process the fact that he has these weird, bizarre thoughts in his mind uh, toward young girls or something. Uh, and again, the tenth and final one is Richard Allen, if it was him on the bridge that day, he had eyewitnesses. And granted, they may not be able to identify his face flawlessly, but when they saw the video of the bridge guy later on after the fact, the multiple eyewitnesses were able to say, yes, that is the person I saw. And that's important. Because when he puts himself there during that same time frame, they, they've they boxed him in to that bridge during that time and window frame. And by his own admission, he says later in an interview, yeah, I'm wearing all those things out there. I mean, come on, think about it, people. Does all of these things combined and all these mistakes he made sound like somebody who has a long history of serial killing and doing this? Usually serial killers, you know, like BTK, other people, they'll improve in how well they commit their crimes over a period of time. This, when I really stop and look at it after all this time, this is sloppy stuff. This is amateur hour, whether somebody else was involved in it or not. This is just straight up amateur hour. I mean, from... The time of day it occurred to the amount of evidence that he allegedly left, which people keep saying, oh, it's hardly any evidence. I beg to differ. To his own admissions, it's just this, you know, everybody wants to portray people like this as just these genius monsters. I'm sorry, but from what I see, Richard Allen was just a complete fool in how he allegedly committed these crimes if he in fact did. And again, if somebody out there who knows Richard Allen, whether it's their family, somebody else is watching this, I would implore you, especially if he has confessed to you, implore him to do the right thing, go into a courtroom either in October or before October, tell everybody what happened, Save your life potentially from the death penalty in Indiana and accept your fate. Because to be honest, I think prosecutors, even though they don't necessarily have a slam dunk case, I think they have a good enough case to where uh, if he doesn't start spilling the beans, somebody's really going to throw the book at him in Indiana. And I don't think any of this Odinism stuff, if it's even allowed in court, by Judge Gall, is going to fly. I, I think, as you know, and I'm on record saying it, I think it's a bunch of nonsense. I think it's a bunch of crap. And, again, this this just doesn't seem to me like a, a veteran serial killer like some of you think. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I know I get a little long-winded in my explanations here sometime, but I, I just really want to hammer home why I think these things. I don't like just saying these things just to say these things. I like to back up, having studied this case for so long, my theories and my thoughts with really detailed reasons as to why I think these things. So you understand how my, my mind works when I'm investigating this sort of stuff. I hope all of you are having a great summer if you're in the United States. I know people in other hemispheres or countries like Australia. I don't know if it's winter there. Um, but be safe out there. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I would love to hear what you have to say in the comments. But again, if you do comment on this video, um, as I tell people all the time, be respectful, use critical thinking, 
don't just start blaming family members. Don't come up with nonsensical crap on my page. This is a page that I created, and this is why I don't make a lot of videos, because I want to make people think. And again, we also still have the fact that investigators have stated in the past that they believe Richard Allen is not necessarily the only other actor involved in this crime. So again, while there could be different meanings for that, if you do happen to know anything about this crime or anyone else who may have been involved, uh, the Delphi tip line is still open, and I would encourage you, if you do know anything about this that you haven't reported, to report it to the Indiana State Police or the tip line. Thanks again, everybody, and again, rest in peace, Libby and Abby. I hope the families get justice. I know I see the Patty family and uh, everybody else going through some difficult times still, as is understandable uh, on some of their Facebook pages when I look and people post things that I see. My heart goes out to you. Um, there are people out there who are still trying to fight for you and stand up for you and make sure that whoever did this is held accountable for this crime or these crimes and that it prevents any future crimes from happening again. And again, I want to remind the family members, you know, Liberty Germans, uh, heroic acts, Abby and Libby, both their heroic acts, have led to uh, large CSAM investigations. It's led to a child predator in Cake and Klein being put away for decades in jail. It's led to other arrests or, and investigations. So just know that even from beyond the grave, those girls still continue to bring the hammer of justice down on some really, really bad people out there in Indiana and elsewhere. Rest in peace to those girls. Have a great day, everybody.